Good morning, friends. How are you? Good morning, Derek. Love to you, my boy. Good morning, Priscilla. Glad you're here. I hope Ohio is treating you well. Vicki, good morning. I hope you're having a good day. I hope you, uh, you're, hola, como esta? I hope your, uh, um, I hope your heart is well. Oh, feeling great. That's good news. Bob Guinan. Good Bob Guinan, everybody. Oh. I am so glad to be friends with Bob Guinan. He does such a great job of, he's, he's in, he is, on, he does such a great job in honoring the veterans in this town. Like, He's a silent servant that just kind of keeps helping out here and there. It's uh, it's terrific. So, um, you know, with all the different things that uh, are going on. So, really, well done, Bob. You are seen. So, morning, Bill. I'm glad you're with us this morning. I hope things are going going well. Cecile, good morning to you. I hope you're feeling well, and I hope uh, healing is good for you. Michelle, good morning. How are you, honey? Great to see you here. John, good morning to you. Hey, everybody's here. Doing great. Just no car. Oh, goodness. I still hasn't. Uh, I hope you find a, I hope you can figure out how to get that baby fixed for you. Hey. Good morning. Kristen Stinson, my honey. Hey, honey. So. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Derek is getting surgery today. It is. Oh, my goodness. That's right. It is Tuesday. That's right. This is happening, people. So if you are of the praying type today, I really want to invite you to pray for Derek um, and that uh, he is going in for surgery today. Um and uh, that uh, you might hold him dear and that all those who will care for him, the surgeon and all the people uh, will, will uh, know the very best and very most perfect way that every touch that comes to his body may be truly ones of healing and grace and goodness. So uh, I hope you'll pray with me today as, uh, as um, he goes in for healing. Good morning, Donna. Hope you're doing well. Oh, we're looking for an engine. Jeez. Aren't we all? Like, yeah, no. For, oh, goodness. That's a lot. Yes, thank you. Yeah, all right. Prince for Derek. Yes, good morning, everybody. So let's get going this morning as, as uh, a few other people trickling in, but uh, we will get moving along. I, I want to hold up. I'm so glad Michelle's here and, uh, and Eric's here because uh, um, that uh, we can, that, uh, and they shared with us that um, his, uh, Derek's surgery, um, so now it's on my heart and I hope now it's on all of yours. And um, these things are not alone and they are not shared. And so that uh, this, all of our trials and all of our griefs should be such. And so I welcome you to this Tuesday, the seventh day of September at 1111 and I'm glad you're here that uh, this past however long now uh, 20 months or whatever it's been that we have continued that we've journeyed with each other and uh, and have been a part of our um, of, of each other's lives and that if you're new to the new here or you've been coming in and out or you're just finding us um, you're a part of a community now so that just the virtue of here in my voice, uh, one that cares for each other, one that prays for each other, uh, one that journeys with each other, even though we might uh, not all be uh, right around the corner from 282 Rock Street here in Fall River, um, we are all a part of one another's life. Um, so good morning, everybody. We, uh, so I want to talk a bit about perspective this morning. There is uh, this grand story that uh, comes from the uh, the book of Samuel, where uh, where the the Israelites are looking for a new king, and they can't find a king, 
and yet they come across this this one who for whom uh, for whom is going to be anointed, and but uh, they're just not. They don't look right. They don't look like a king. They don't look like the thing that should be in charge. And the great quote that comes from uh, to Samuel from God is, who says, my ways are not your ways, and I do not see with the eyes of men, but I see what is in people's hearts. And that so, and, and, that, and God, that God might see into our heart. And that that we might and that and that this pers- this God perspective that uh, that that Sam the book of Samuel holds up and I think it's worth looking at this morning and I think it's worth contemplating uh, because I don't know about you but perspective is in many ways been one of the great challenges of these days is to actually get some perspective on okay I get a piece of information how important is that a piece of information is it a 10? Is it an 8? Is it a 6? Is it is a 5? Is it even true? Or, But that to have some perspective on, on sources, on ideas. And so just as a little fun thing, if you're noticing, I normally you have a perspective of me with all of my books and my some of my awards and, and little knick-knack and tricky things that people have given me and on beautiful display behind me with, uh, with beautiful wood. And uh, and today I wanted to. Get, we're in the same office in the same place, but today I'll give you the perspective of, yeah, that's how the sausage gets made right there, Bob. Like that is there's there is a different seeing uh, that you have uh, from me. Um, yeah, my desk is almost always that messy. Uh, if it's not that messy, you actually want to worry. Uh, if I've cleaned things up that much, there's probably there you know, uh, it probably means I'm in a state so. How we look at things and the perspective, the angle from which we look at things is as vital and as important and probably more important than even the very things we look at. How we, Derek is going in for surgery today and how he looks at that, uh, if he looks at this as an opportunity for healing, as, you know, looks at this as a way uh, to, to be whole and well and good in this world, as he looks at this, or if it looks like, or if he holds it as, I'm going to go see a bunch of people who are going to cut me open. They're very different places. And so I hope I didn't plant that too much. But just a, but to know that, that, that uh, one will elicit uh, a whole bunch of feelings because our thoughts actually lead our feelings. This is one of the, one of the core things that our thoughts can lead our feelings. And one will elicit a bunch of feelings about, oh my gosh, I am, I am held in the palm of, uh, in the palm of God's hand. I, there are all these amazing healing people in this world who are going to, we're going to offer healing and goodness to me that my body knows how to knit itself together because it is, it is uh, grounded in the logos and the divine wisdom that everything in this world is, is participating and working for me as I go to be healed and made whole or, Oh my God, they're going to cut me open. Two very different ways to hold perspective. When Samuel hears the word of God, that this king that is supposed to be anointed, who nobody thinks that as a king, comes and says, your ways are not my ways, and I do not see as you see. You see a body. You see a thing. I see a heart. And he's not talking. And God, by the way, is not talking about, uh, you know, a, a, a mass of muscle in the center of your chest that has four that has uh, four compartments that and a big aorta surrounding it. That's not what God's talking about when he talks about art. He's talking about the, the spiritual reality of where we ground ourselves and where we come from in our emotional and spiritual life. Where is our heart? The word courage, which is found numerous times in the Bible, again and again and again, you probably have heard this. Um, and I've never gone and checked it out if it's true, true but, they, but it is reported that there are 365 verses, uh, 
verses in which God mentions that we should have courage. Well, that word courage, it's a French word, and it, and it, cour is heart, and it is to live with a full heart. When the way God sees, if, if in fact that we, we take Samuel at his word, we take God's word to Samuel at his word, that if the way God sees is that God sees our heart, God is seeing the fullness of our life. That because there's courage, to live with courage is to live with the full, is to live with a full heart. Courage, to be, have a, a heart that is filled, a whole heart. My hope for you, friends, is that you will consider your perspective on things and you will change it. You'll change it regularly. You'll change it often. You'll change it uh, that just in the way that, that I've, you know, I've set my camera up other and you now have a perspective on my work life that probably I wish you didn't have at some point, that that there is this there is this uh, this kind of little horror show behind me that's happening in which, uh, you know, from that swamp, uh, um, hopefully good things grow. But that we might understand that that perspective, particularly given this online world we're in, if you're, you know, because where I'm, I'm casting on Facebook, holy smokes, there's never been a creation in God's green earth that has been more to manipulate perspective than this. But understand that God sees you in your heart. God sees your struggles. God knows your fears. God knows your pains. God knows your anxieties. God knows your your the, your despair and your brokenness and the way that you just feel like you can't do it one more day. God sees all of that and invites you into wholeness and perspective. When in Jesus' ministry, he has a word that we come to uh, that, that we've been, that, that has kind of been ruined in some ways by translation. Um, that uh, it is called, it's called this word metanoia, which is the Greek word for it. And it is this, it is this, and, and it is it's often translated as repent. But repent, but that's, uh, it's really a poor translation. Because it's really about, it's about, it's about not just thinking, it's not just about changing your, your like, you know, you know, okay, I thought this, now I need to turn around and I need to think that. But metanoia is about how, it is about knowing. It is about changing our knowing, that we might know something differently. And not just know it, like it's not talking about intellectual knowledge, it's not talking about two plus two equals four, it's talking about knowing like walking down a street and experiencing the smells. It is about knowing the way we embrace our beloved and the way that we know that person, the way that person knows us. It's, and so when Jesus calls to us to repent, to make, to metanoia, he's saying, he's saying, turn your life, turn your perspective, turn the way in which you see so that you might maybe see a little bit as God sees, that we may see the heart of the matter rather than just the body of it. The great St. Teresa says that if you truly want to be transformed, if you truly want to be changed, if you truly want to be other than you are, pray to see as God sees and to see the heart of things, to see the heart of the people in your life, and maybe even to see your own heart for all of its mysteries and its wonders and its beauties so I'm going to invite you to uh, uh, to change. Ah, oh, John's right on it. He's already beat me to it. You you're, you beat me to the punch. I was going to invite you to change something today. To change the way if you're going to work, change the way that you go home. To change your perspective on things. If you're reading something, change and read something that you've never read before. If you're a reader, if you're if you're watching something, watch something you've never read before. Put see the world, engage with somebody that you would you wouldn't have otherwise engaged with. Change your perspective. Change the way that you see the world. Change the angle. Move your move the couch. Do something that changes your perspective in this world. Not because just all change is good. 
but that when we shift ourselves a little bit, we, we create some space. And in the creating of the space, maybe we that's the moment the Holy Spirit can enter in. That's the moment the angels can go to work and fill that space with a little bit of how God sees things, of God seeing the heart of things, your heart, the people of your in your lives heart, when all of their they're good and they're bad, they're ugly and they're wonderful, they're heaven and they're hell, which are, are captured in within it. And so I want to invite you to fill your days with a little bit of something other than what it is today. And to change your perspective on how your life and your wisdom and everything else comes together. Because although this is a great view, it's only one view. I even have the closet open for you. Oh, good Lord. Because the other thing about that is that we can put things in our perspective, just like Derek can put in his perspective as he goes forward towards healing this morning. And as he goes forward with all the love of this community, with all the love of his mom and dad, with all the love of the people in the world, that as he goes through all of that, he can put some perspective in his life that's other than maybe what his fear or his anxiety or anything else would be. And that's my hope for him and prayer for him today. The great Goethe says this. That he says, every day, one should at least hear one little song Read one good poem, see one fine painting, and if at all possible, speak a few sensible words. Well, that's kind of my mission. That's kind of my invitation for you today. As your Samuel will speak to you, uh, that and your as you look at the little monsters of your life and realize that maybe they are meant to be kings, that you can hear the beauty and the wonder of the heart that is within the bodies you encounter, the glory of the wonder of the, uh, and the beauty of the life that you're living. By changing the perspective of it a little bit, by doing something other than what you have done, by hearing a little beautiful song, by seeing a little paint, fine painting, or by maybe, like as John says, maybe take a different route home from work, or a different way around so that you might see as and open yourself to see as God sees. All right, friends, that's my hope for you today. It is also Denise Ward's birthday, our moderator here at church. So if you are in the, if you, uh, if you, if you should your paths cross with Denise, I invite you to wish her happy birthday as well. All right, friends, uh, um, keep Derek in your prayers if you would. And uh, peace and grace to you all. We'll pick it up tomorrow with another 1111.